Hey, how's it going? So today we're going to work on question number four out of the 45 that I recommend you try. So let's jump right into it. The question is called maximum subarray, which is number 53 in the code. So let's read the question. Given an array of nums, find continuous subarray containing at least one number, which has largest sum and return its sum. A subarray is a continuous part of an array. Okay, so let's try to understand this. So what we're really trying to do is find uh, the maximum value as you accumulate um, numbers in that array. So you're given an array of numbers um, and you effectively need to find the longest chain or longest sequence of which when you add numbers up, it, it becomes the highest value. Okay, so let's look at some examples um, and see what I'm talking about. So in example number one, if you're given an array like such, negative two, one, three, four, negative one, two, one, five, and four, what is the maximum number you can get uh, through this subarray, right? So if you look at it in this example, the maximum output is six, but how can they come up with six, right? In here, the explanation is that they looked at four, one, two, one, right? Why is this the case? Because four plus negative one plus two plus one is the highest largest sum value you're looking for. So effectively, you're just looking for in this array, is there a smaller array within here that when you add it together becomes the largest value? If it is, then return that value. Cool. Let's look at the second example. So in example number two, you're only given one number. Of course, you return that first number. All right. The final example, number three, you're given number five, four, one, seven, eight. Well, let's see what number you should return. In this case, we should return number 23. So you ask why? Well, five plus four, right? That is nine. And then plus negative one, that is eight, right? Plus seven, right? Uh, 15 and 23. So you add the full thing. The full thing is what you need to get return back. Okay. So let's, let's think about how to uh, solve this problem before we dive into it. Um, before I dive into this question, I usually like to look at the example and see if I can figure out a way to look at this, right? So here's our example. The example that we were looking at is, you know, the first one that they were given to us. How do we find out or der derive an equation or something such that I know that this subarray is the array I'm looking for, right? So let's, let's try to process this a little bit. So what do we know we need to do for sure? Well, we know we're going to have to, at the very least, you know, go through every single value at least once, right? Because you need to check whether or not you're going to, if that's going to be part of the maximum, right? So, you know, there's going to be some sort of for loop in there. So what do I need to do? Well, I'm going to have to effectively go through each number and effectively see if I need to do something, right? Do something, sum something with it right so I need to go through this number and I need to know if I should do something with the number I'm at right because right now the key question is asking I need to find the subarray that is continuous so meaning that I'm very dependent on my previous value right so for example if I'm at negative two well there's no previous value of course I'll just return negative two if I'm at one well, if I started at negative two and I add one, right, I'm going to make a decision. Well, should I start, should I have started at one or should I have started at negative two? Right? So in this case, actually, let's, let's look at this logic. If I were to start at one, right? If I start accumulating numbers at one, um, what, what, what does that mean? It means that, okay, I'll start at one. That's my one value. But what if I started at zero? Right. If I start at zero, I'm going to be negative two plus one. So this number over here, second value, if you accumulated, it's only accumulated to negative one. Right. So it'll actually be kind of stupid of me for to, to start at negative two. 
right? Because we're trying to find the maximum. So it actually makes more sense for me to start at negative, I mean, at one, right? So let's continue to look at it. All right, so what if I start at one? What do I do next? Well, let's add to the next value, all right? So here I have a choice. Should I, you know, start from negative three or should I just, you know, take my previous accumulated number, right? If I start at negative three, is that bigger than my one plus negative three, which is negative two? No. So that means that our starting point should still be one, right? So let's look at the next number, right? So in this case, this will be like a negative two. So in my next number here is going to be, well, I could either start from my previous number, which is the negative two that I computed, or I could start at four, right? Obviously, if I go negative two plus four is two, and my four is larger than two, it's obvious that I probably should start at four, right? If we continue this path, it, it comes, it, it makes it seem like it's, it's actually not too bad. Basically, I need to decide whether or not I start accumulating or I just start at the value at where I'm at right now, right? So let, let's look into how to solve this. So I'm going to go and basically as I iterate through this array, I'm going to have to make a decision. I'm going to have to make a decision whether or not I start from this value that I highlighted or I consider the things that have accumulated in the past, right? So let, let's, let's write some code. So we need to know that, okay, the key thing is we, we, we must not forget. We need to return, we need to return something, right? So we need to return the maximum value. So let's, let's try coding this function max sub array. And I'm talking about some numbers here. Cool. So what am I going to do? I'm going to make sure I have, I'm going to iterate through each number, right? And, and effectively make a decision. What I'm going to do? Well, I'm going to check if my current number is big or should I take my previous accumulated number and use that, right? So I need to make a decision here, right? If I am doing that, then what do I do? Cool. So if I decide for this case, if I was going to use one, then we should probably keep a track of our maximum value too. So keep track of max value, right? And also finally return that max value. All right. All right. Cool. So in here, I'm going to iterate through each number, make a decision, check if my current number is big, or should I take my previous accumulated number and use that? Oops. And use, use that. If I were to choose to, um, so I need to keep track of my previous number too, right? Cause my previous number is basically my total accumulated. So I'm going to call, uh, accumulated number, right? I'll keep track of that. So I'm going to see if my accumulated number, see, see if my accumulated number is bigger than my max value. If so, replace it because all we really care is to find the maximum value, right? All right, cool. So what do we do as, as we do that? Okay. If we make a decision that, you know, we're going to either choose this to be our starter or choose, uh, the cumulative number of your previous plus this one to be your starting number, then we need to make sure that our cumulative number is updated as we iterate through the next number here. Right? So that's going to be like, okay, well, let's see if we can make, the accumulated number will effectively be equal to the uh, calculated calc value, right? When I say calculated value, it's like, which one's bigger? Is it my current number that's bigger one or is my negative two plus one bigger, right? Whatever that number decision is, that's going to be my accumulated number. You go here, is my three bigger or is my previous two number that accumulated number, which is in this case, uh, one, right? One minus th three is negative two, or is it negative three? In this case, it was negative two. So that's my next new accumulated number. Okay. So, 
Uh, hopefully this makes sense. Let's let's try to put some code into it. All right. Let uh, max value equal to. I'm just gonna make it nums at position zero. I know in this case we have to consider. Okay, well, what if the what if the nums if nums dot length is equal to one equal to one? I'll just return nums at zero. Okay, that's just the edge case that we should consider. Let uh, accum. I'll just say act number act num equal to. Uh, by default, I'm just gonna put the first number for now. For argument's sake, right? All right, cool. Now we need to iterate and make a decision. So how do you do iterate? For let i equal to zero. I is less than nums dot length. I is plus plus. Cool. Wait, so let's look at it. Would you run to consider? Let's maybe start at position one instead of my initial position because I already set my previous value over here already, right? So we don't necessarily need to go any further. So, all right, cool. So we're iterating, we're starting from one and we're just saying that, okay, should I use my cumulative number, which in this case is negative two? Or should I use, um, so negative two plus uh, my one, or should I just use my uh, my one, right? So let's let's look at that. So let calc equal to math dot max of my previous my current number I'm looking at, which is the one, right? So it's nums at i at i, or should I look at the total of my previous accumulated number plus my current, right? So it would be like my accumulated number, a q num, plus my nums at i, which was bigger, right? So we're gonna calculate, okay, what's the maximum, what's the biggest number? Either I start from this number or I continuously accumulate, right? So once you have this number, we need to check, well, okay, well, let's check if, if my calc number is greater than my max value, then let's make sure max value will equal to calc. All right. Cool. Now, let's see. Once you have this, um, then we need to make sure um, we adjust the, ignite, the net new accumulated number. We need to make sure that, okay, our new accumulated number is equal to our calculated number because we already made a decision. I was like, what's my decision? Should I use one or should I use my accumulated number, right? In this case, I'm gonna use one because one is best definitely bigger than my accumulated number, which is negative two plus one, which is negative one. Of course, I'll use one. So one is gonna be my new, new starting point. And then I'm gonna move on and on and on and on and I'll get my solution. So let's take a look if this gives us a solution. Let's kill this. Let's kill this. All right. But before we look into solutionizing it, let's look at our time complexity and space complexity. Time complexity and space. Uh, space complexity. Complexity. I can't spell today. All right. What's our time complexity in this? So in this one, obviously we just have to go through the array once. Uh, Math.max doesn't really do much. You're just comparing to one another. Um, so that's O of n. O of n, space. How much are we consuming? Uh, we're always only just gonna use variables here. We're not really growing this variable any much. So I would say it's O of one. Cool. Let's submit and see if we solve this problem. Bingo. The problem is solved. All right. Hope everyone enjoyed this particular uh, solution. Um, and this is a little bit easier. We're going to start ramping up to more uh, difficult ones as we move along to our 75 question journey. But if you like this type of question and solution, uh, definitely hit a uh, like and subscribe. Uh, I know today I'm a little bit out of it because I spent the whole day at a park and it's already like close to 12 o'clock here at midnight when I'm filming this video. 
Um, so I do apologize for that, but hey, this is one take, Mike. I'm just going to go straight into the solution right away. Um, hope you enjoy it. Talk to you guys later. Bye.